hanging out with me today is my twin, DJ Z. That's right, hanging out with DJ V. What's the name of the show? DJ's Entertainment. That's right, and where is it at? On YouTube. And Irving, aka DJ, DJ V. You gotta say that with excitement. So you still in training? That's all right, but you coming up? In training, first of all, I am the host. He's not gonna be what here tomorrow. What do we need them to I'm do? I'm coming. We, we gotta subscribe and to like. my channel. And like, not yeah, my channel. channel. Not his channel. My, my channel. channel. Thank you very much, <laughs> Vincent Irving, aka DJ, DJ V. Z. <laughs> Mr. Gary Dumas, model, entrepreneur, Mr. Entertainer, everything, man. And uh, that's why we're here to break this down. So tell us, man, just unpack it all for us. <laughs> well, Vince, thank you, first of all, for this opportunity to participate, man. As you thank know, you. Uh, you are a guy that this community supports, believes in, and it happens as a result of the people that you support and the people that you believe in. Right. So you're actually just kind of reaping where you've already sown, man. So thank you. And we've had that conversation. <laughs> and with that, that is true. Um, Gary Dumas is my name, oh. and uh, this is uh, like a portion of my office, the Dumas Company. Okay. Uh, the Dumas Company is a personal development program, and I'll just give you the goal or the objective of it. Mm. It is to inspire participants with ideas and concepts that provokes an improvement of thoughts that will lead to a better version of themselves. And so we're mm. excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what led to the Dumas Company was my career as a substance use counselor. Okay. And so I worked for a hospital here for several years and then I saw a niche, as well as a group of individuals that I really wanted to serve. And so I moved forward with it and um, here we are. Now, as far as the entertainment is concerned, yes, boy, sir. that takes me way back. It's been so long. Yeah, we got dust off the cobwebs. Oh, <laughs> man, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, but yet, uh, it's good to still just kind of, you know, share a little bit about the entertainment piece because the music industry for me, mm -hmm. um, it exposed me to vision. Gotcha. You know, I had, a, I, I was able to develop a strong appreciation for vision being in the music industry. Okay. And even though music itself is awesome, I mean, the sound, the artist, the lyrics, all those things, I mean, are unquestionably good you right. know of course depending on what you're listening to and the influence that it has on you no doubt but overall uh my experiences with the music industry which i was very grateful for to have had an opportunity to connect with a lot of uh, major record labels and things of that nature mm -hmm. and in fact i remember one time in particular uh i was invited to hang out and rap a lot records wow. and a uh, big shout out to the staff if any of you happen to see this you know right. like years later By all means. but man i just happen to think about this one particular time i mean i was invited to a lot of major labels uh because i had personal and professional relationships mm -hmm. but this one just real quick story i recall being invited down to rap a lot i told him i was coming to houston it's like man you got to come up to the office and i never forget i mean the whole moment was unforgettable i think i was there for like a weekend or so right but I remember going in through the garage, the parking garage, right. and I saw all of these Bentleys. <laughs> I saw all these Rolls Royces. Wow. And this was like early 90s. Wow. You know, because everybody wanted a Rolls Royce, everybody right. wanted a Bentley. No doubt. But the thing was, people at the record labels was owning Bentleys. Wow. You know, and, but at, the, and at that particular time, there were like two or three you know, in the uh, parking garage, right. and one, the one, the baddest one of the baddest ones there belonged to uh, Scarface. Wow, <laughs> man, it just it excites me to think about it. Right, Scarface is a guy by the name of Jay Prince. Okay, yeah. who was the man? You right. know, right, and still is based on what he's got going on. Right, but um, and so I'm saying that to say I'm tying it into just how it caused my dreams to come alive, mm -hmm. and. And I don't want to, you know, throw anybody off or anything, but I'm very transparent. Right. But I was also battling with uh, an addiction back then, which was oh, alcohol. Wow, okay. And so it was, wow, just to think about this, but it was those, it was being exposed to people living their best life then. Right. That gave me the idea 
that you can do it. You can right. make it through this. Right. And I never discussed that with anybody. Right, right. Thank I you. never told anybody that I was battling with an addiction. Right. In fact, I think I remember talking to one music producer uh, who was who was uh, sought out to do some independent stuff for the face. Oh, wow. And he and I were real cool. Right. And I told him about it, and he just denied it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just said, man, you think I got a problem with alcohol? And he's like, you, my friend? Of course not. But I knew I did because it's one of those things where if you have to ask, right, you know. Right, there you go. Right. So, but at any rate, the music industry, man, just really connected me with visions and dreams and, you know, being around a lot of these uh, professional recording artists and, and concert tours and, and different things. And it really caused me to believe that, you know what, Gary, there's more out there. Right. Super. Aside from the, you know, whatever people did for recreational use or whatever, right. it was just another level of living, right. you know, and uh, I just thought that was huge. Exactly. So, what did you do when it came to entertainment, man? Well, because I was a natural people person, mm -hmm. uh, promotions was my thing. Gotcha. Promotion was my thing. I was the guy that uh, this region in particular, Kansas City, St. Louis, um, I was, you know, pretty much a go-to guy. Uh, to set up in-store interviews, gotcha. uh, you know, different things of that nature, uh, which takes me to another story uh, real share. quick, and it ties yeah. right in. Do share. But I remember this time in particular where, and again, I got many calls, you know, to Gary Hay, you know, LL Cool J is gonna be in town, wanna set up an in-store, you know, whatever, right. uh, or, you know, whatever artist, Christian, I don't know if you guys remember Christian, uh -huh. those that are my age, right. you know, <laughs> uh, Christian and, and uh, Eve, and okay. I mean, I can name a whole lot. Right, right, right. But one situation in particular, I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. um, I got a call, and it was, Gary, set up, I want you to set up this uh, in-store uh, meet and greet. Okay. And at the time, there was a music store called Music Land. Yes, I remember. And it was in uh, the Landing Shopping that Center. That is correct. <laughs> and I'll never forget. Right. And I'm not going to say the group's name right now <laughs> because I want to keep you in suspense till I get to the back end of this By piece. All means. Let's but uh, the, 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 the regional rep called me and said, Hey, Gary, I want you to put together this in store studio, our in store meet and greet and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's these young girls. And their ages at the time was like 12, wow. you know, somewhere around in there. Right. And I'm like, you know what, you know, whatever, man. I don't, what am I gonna, you know, these young girls and everything. Right. And so everybody was just kind of blowing it off and everything. The name of the group was Destiny's Child. Go figure. <laughs> and little did I know. Exactly. Little did I know. Little did anybody know that they were, they were gonna become one of the biggest Right. female army groups of all time yet there was this one in particular <laughs> man i get goosebumps just talking about this because wow. i haven't talked about this in like probably ever well, thank you for sharing but it was just one person in particular man it just blew up like nitrogen and it's obviously you know that's beyonce so uh, I'm not dropping any names of Buddy Hustle, none of that. Right, right. I'm just telling you the truth. Right. I mean, <laughs> That's what we hear. She'll for. probably never see this, and if she does find it, she don't find it, she probably won't remember anyway, but it's not about any of that. Right. It's about my experiences with the music industry right. as it relates to being a dreamer mm -hmm. and seeing and actually seeing the beginning of somebody's career, even if it was just for that moment, right. and seeing how it has evolved and catapulted and became like catastrophic in the music industry. And so that really did a lot for me once again as it relates to dreams and believing that it's out there. Right. What, and I tell clients today, what you're looking for is looking for you. That is true. And so that comes from a place of actual experience and exposure. Wayne Minor Public House. Oh, man. That's where it all <laughs> began for me. Wow. Wayne Minor, man. Wow. Love it. Yes. The original Wayne Minor. Yes, right. The project. and, uh, projects, man. <laughs> and you know, every Saturday morning you can guarantee that somebody's parents are gonna play some some albums, some 33s. That is true. Like at the top of the volume. That is true. You know, we lived in the 911 building, so you had 911, 1900, 2011, 1821. Wow. Wow. You know, you had all these different high rises. Right, right. And uh, 912. You know, you had all these high rises, and you're guaranteed you're guaranteed on Saturday morning to hear. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the Ohio players, baby. There you go. You know, and uh, yeah, and, and <laughs> you were guaranteed, man, to hear the Ohio players. Yeah. And it, I just fell in love with me. You know, music is, you know, for me, was liberating, man. Right. It just made you feel so free, right. and it made you feel so uh, inspired, right. you know, because you know, you know the, the, the little girls and stuff, and no doubt. and the yeah. guys, and, sure. and and my little crew. We used to want to dress like the artists on the album, <laughs> you know. I mean, here comes Confunction. Right, go figure. With, with that movie, I mean, not movie, but uh, they had a, a hit single titled "Fun." Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fun, yeah. fun, fun, fun. Uh, right. You know, the album. The name of the album was Secrets, right. and we loved that album because the guys were so clean. Michael Cooper and all these guys, mm -hmm. and the Ohio players and stuff like that. And man, I just fell in love with music. And then they had a, a, a record store called Tiger's Records. That's right, down on Independence. And, you know, Independence <laughs> Avenue, baby. Oh man, this is so cool. Yes. And they would have the big concerts, wow. and you could bet that all the artists would be in Tiger's Records. Wow. You know, on like wow. the day or the day of the concert, like around noon. Right. And so there we were in droves, walking from Wayne Minor Parker Square, you know, Chip right. Village up to Tiger's Records, the Barcase, you know, um, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, wow. featuring, at the time it was Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, featuring right. Teddy Prendergrass. Right. And I remember my mom, we went to that concert that night, and Teddy Prendergrass and Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes used to do some stuff on purpose. They used to walk from the hotel, which is right across the street, uh -huh. to the municipal auditorium, so people can chase them. <laughs> and I used to have to follow my mom and there was there, there's their uh, Theodore Pentecost, and they chased him, and I'm running behind my mom. You know, I'm 12 years old. Right. But man, she's screaming like, oh, "Mom, what are you doing?" But man, just the whole fanfare, the energy, the vibe, the success. Right. I used to couldn't wait to go to dream it. Uh, I used to couldn't wait to go to sleep at night just to dream wow. about being in the entertainment industry, <laughs> just being one of those guys that was a part of it. Right. And uh, man, that Ohio Players boy, fire album. Got, got you. Man, it got you. something to think about. Along with that man with entertainment, we also understand that you were a model. How did, mm. that, how did that come into play? Well, growing up, um, you know, my mom was really big on being well-groomed. No doubt. And my, my pops, uh, you know, very good looking guy. Um, I wish I could have had his looks. <laughs> Rest in heaven, dad, you right. know, recently. Right. But, um, you know, just even though we lived in public housing, mm -hmm. but, you know, everybody was very conscious right. of themselves. We we're always very trendy. Right. You know, off into the fads, and we well, always kept our hair cut and everything, and was well groomed, and I was sneaking to, you know, uh, uh, my mother's, you know, boyfriend, his cologne or something, right, right. which was Pierre Cardin yeah. of Vic Saint Laurent. Man, <laughs> boy, I was sneaking into that, right. and you know, getting it, it, it led to me getting into the modeling field because, again, it gave me that sense of confidence right. as a young man, right. and it made me feel like I was doing something that successful people did. Gotcha. Makes sense. And so being well groomed and and dressing nice and and I had, un had an uncle and everything that always wore suits and drove brand new cars. Mm -hmm. And as he got tired of certain things, I had to <laughs> hand me downs. And I'd be at uh, at school in seventh grade, you know, in a, a pure suede Austin <laughs> jacket. And I never forget because he got mad at me because I had a curl. Right. Wow. And the, yes. and the, and the, and the, and the the escrow Juice. stuff yeah. dripped yeah. down on the... <laughs> and damaged it, yeah. And damaged it. Yeah. And so, man, but still in all, I wanted to remain in that type of lifestyle. I wanted to emulate um, what people did that, you know, was well-groomed, keeping a nice haircut, and um, and just kept themselves together. Plus, that way, when my uncle come over, he wouldn't have to put newspaper in his car <laughs> for me being so dirty. Wow. Because he put newspaper in his car, okay. you know, because I would be so dirty from playing outside. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I need to I need to get it together. So I always had an appetite uh -huh. and just being well-groomed. And my mom made sure right. that whenever I left the house, at least until I got dirty when I was a lot younger, but right. eventually, you know, I wanted want to be well groomed, man, and and I like the way the ladies responded. No doubt, that is. You know, when you something about when you smell good, 
Well, then you're looking was, good. You don't have to, your looks didn't have to be, you know, like somebody else, just look the best, you. just have the best look that you could present. Right. And so I wanted, to, I wanted to have that and it made me feel good. And that led to me eventually um, getting into the modeling field. Beautiful, what are some of, some of the accolades within your modeling career? Uh, nice paychecks. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I understand you, you, you know, all did a, a great company you worked with. Yeah, yeah, I was fortunate enough to do some runway for a company called Soft Sheen out of Chicago yes. at the time. Johnson. Again, this was back in the day. Yes, yes. But, uh, magazine, Johnson product. There was a gym, there was a, uh, a stylist here mm. uh, named Howard, okay. big time stylist mm. at the time. I don't know if he's still around or not, but right. uh, he did this models call mm. and he was connected. He was actually... I think he did contract, well, I don't think, I know he did some type of contract work with Saul Sheen okay. in Chicago and Ebony and all that, and he just had a lot of plugs. Right. And um, so I auditioned and everything to be a part of that, and I was fortunate to actually get some, do some things with that. And it was a good feeling, it, 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 especially coming out of a world that I had been a part of. Right. It's like, you know, I was able to be a part of something where my visions and dreams were able to become escalated and elevated, right. okay. you know. And even though it served its purpose then, mm. but it really served a big purpose in my life years down the line, which wow. of course, you know, has a lot to do with where I am today. Right. But um, the modeling field was, oh man, fun. I what, mean, what year did you start into modeling? Like 90. Okay. It's probably yeah. like 1990, so that's how long ago it was. <laughs> but that's um, all right. And even during that uh, Soft Sheen piece, I still was able to do a lot of freelance things uh -huh. and some calendars and, and stuff like that. So, nice. uh, however, there was one part that I always wanted to accomplish. And my mentor at the time, his name was Gary Kimbrough, top of the line model. Mm -hmm. Did a lot, you saw his face a lot on those kit boxes and stuff like that. Okay. He was uh, getting me connected with Ebony Man. I don't know if you guys remember Ebony yes, Man magazine. magazine. Yes. And he had a good friend named Ben that was always featured in Ebony Man. Wow. And so uh, once I got my stuff in and everything, and Gary would tell me, because he was involved in the administration and stuff, right. and I'll never forget, he would always tell me, Gary, it's gonna happen, just be patient. Right. You know, they gotta get, they got some others that are already doing some things, right. but your time is definitely gonna come and uh, just be patient. So all I thought about was Kansas City <laughs> seeing me in like Ebony, Ebony Man magazine. You're being the Ebony Man of the month. <laughs> you know, oh man, I couldn't wait for that to happen. Right. Uh, but unfortunately they ended up folding and some right. internal things happened, but still in all, man, I mean, it, it was a lot of fun because it gave me hope, Right. you know, that I was doing something that probably saved me in ways mm -hmm. that I probably would have never had an idea, looking back on it in hindsight. So, uh, but yeah, that was the beautiful. That was the situation. As I started a personal development company, um, which is just every you know, it represents every fiber of my being. I love to inspire people, no and I'm grateful that the God that I serve has entrusted me with gifts that are for me to give away, not keep to myself. Matter of fact, the more you give it away, the more you actually get to keep it. That's true. That <laughs> so true. Right. I inspire people for a living, basically. Mm -hmm. But I always had an idea of still wanting to uh, re-engage in uh, the grooming industry mm -hmm. and it, to where it wouldn't take me away from my actual true calling. Mm -hmm. And so the skincare, you know, right. that used to be something that I used to buy a lot of and right. use a lot. Right. And I remember just back in the day, people, man, your skin's so soft and so, <laughs> so forth, so forth. Right. And, um, but I've always liked the skincare piece. And so I said, you know what? Maybe it's time I start my own. I have the maturity, right. um, the resources, um, and I don't want to try to make anybody think that I have more than what I no, what I really have, but I don't want to minimize right. what God has done either. Right. Uh, and in actual, actuality, a lot of it was just through favor right. and just good relationships. You right. know, that alone can take you a long way. True. But I had the resources, and I wanted to start my own skincare line. Mm. And uh, with that, we gave birth to the G series, the wow. G series skincare for men. Now. Even though the name of the skincare is the G series by Gentleman Decision, mm -hmm. it's not in any way meaning Gary Dumas, the okay. GD. Okay. But it represents yes, Gentleman Decision Good. because I wanted to promote the idea that real gentlemen make the decision to take care of their skin. Glory. And so we have the G1, G2, G3, G4, and G5. Mm -hmm. The G1 is my daily hydro cleanser, which features a lot of really healthy 
and top of the line ingredients and extracts such as um, coconut kiwi, hibiscus, wow. rose hips, aloe vera, wow. sea algae, nine sudzing. Wow. I mean, you know, I can just go into a whole lot about the ingredients of every last one of them items, but that's been a lot of fun. Superb. And it's given me an opportunity to do something I hadn't done in a long time, and that's network with people outside of, outside of my hometown. Superb. And I love getting out, meeting people, and, and putting on some clothes every now and then. <laughs> that's why I'm starting, I've started my own clothing line. Wow. I call 12. Superb. And, uh, you'll see that. It's okay. forthcoming as well. Superb. And, you know, I'm just excited, man. You know, I didn't even realize that what I got going on, all these things, because I don't talk about those things, not out of false humility, right. but my focus is to inspire other people. Right, you're just busy. Getting busy your serving time. other people. Right, that's all it is. So the G-Series um, has allowed me to, you know, uh, reconnect with the industry and meet some awesome people, wonderful people, some, some inspiring people, some very talented people, and some just fun people. Sometimes it's okay to just have just just have fun. No doubt. You know, and I was listening to Bishop Jakes a few moments ago before this interview, and he said, don't get so caught up in worrying about problems to where you don't engage in having fun. No doubt. And let's just have fun, you know, and after all, man, you can tell by the hair, you know, we're not like, as, I'm not as young as I once was. No doubt. So I want to have fun. So the music industry has eventually led to uh, the modeling industry, which eventually led to me becoming a counselor. And then, of course, that incorporated uh, the actual skincare piece. So the G-Series. Um, Skincare for Men by Gentleman Decision. What you're doing, man. How can people get in contact with you? Get the G Series for sure. Uh, Clothing 12 coming. Uh, we want to find out how do we get that. Well, you can call the office 816 492 6176. We have the skincare website, which is gdskincare.com. Okay. Very, very simple. gdskincare.com. Or if you have an inquiry in regards to the Dumas Company, which is a personal development program, which is again uh, implemented with every fiber of my being. Mm -hmm. TheDumasCompany.com. Again, keep it very, very simple. Right. You can go to TheDumasCompany.com, learn about the programming. Uh, there's also a link there that will take you to the skincare piece as well. So you can accomplish both of those in one in one click. Wow. <laughs> nice. Or if you just want to go straight to the skincare piece, gdskincare.com. I'd love to hear from you. I love serving people. I love success stories. Sure. And uh, what better time other than to share success stories than now. and to develop healthy, positive relationships other than now. That is true. Well, DJs and Entertainment, Vincent Irving, a.k.a. DJ V. Thanks you so DJ much. DJ Yeah. <laughs> Word up. Appreciate it.